Hi, my name is Sarah Comerford and I'm going to be making a kale and potato pie today. Also has some parsnips in it to add a little richness and flavor to it. And right now, the, uh, the first step that I'm going to take is to make the dough for you. So I have my Cuisinart here. I've had this Cuisinart since I got married. It's 20 years old. It's a tank. It never fails. I'm going to add two cups of flour to it, just like that. I've got about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and I'm just going to throw it in there. And then I'm going to put the top on and just pulse it for a minute or two to blend it up. Okay, right here, I'm going to add two tablespoons of chilled shortening and 12 tablespoons. That's not a mistake. It really is 12 tablespoons of butter. So if you're shy about butter, you might want to try a different recipe. But if you love butter like I do, this is the recipe for you. Now you're just going to pulse it little bit. I have a third of a cup of chilled water that I've had in the refrigerator, but you can do it quickly by adding a nice cube if you need to. And I'm going to add it through the feed tube so that it adds in slowly. Sometimes you need a little bit more, sometimes you need a little bit less, so eyeball it. The way you know it's done is when all of a sudden the dough just sort of congeals into a mass and spins as one ball in the canister. If it's too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour, but as with any pastry dough, the less you handle it, the better. Whoa, that's done. So I'm going to turn this out onto a floured board right here, like that, and just knead it once or twice with the palms of my hand, not too much. You want to see nice flecks of butter in there because that's what makes the flakiness. And then I am going to cut it in half so that I have two discs that are about five inches in diameter, just like that. And I'm going to shape it, again, trying not to overhandle it, and I'm going to shape it into approximately a five inch disc. So just eyeball it. That's about right. And the same thing with the second one. There you go, two five inch discs. I'm going to take some plastic wrap. You can also use wax paper if that's what you have. I just happen to have plastic wrap handy. Wrap it up because you don't want it to dry out. And once it's all wrapped up, you're going to put it in the fridge for two hours to set up. And that's it. They're ready to go into the fridge. So my dough has been chilling for about two hours in the fridge and I'm going to roll it out to make the bottom crust for the pie. Take a handful of flour, get your surface nice and smooth, put a little flour on it, a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. It doesn't matter what kind of rolling pin you use. You can use a ceramic one, you can use, this is a wooden one that was my grandmother's so I like to use it. And just roll it out. It's a pretty soft dough but you got to put a little bit of muscle into it, a little bit of elbow grease. And you want to roll it to be a little bit bigger than the circumference of the pie so that you have a little extra hanging over the edge and then you can crimp it. Let's say we're just about there. So fold it in half like that so that it doesn't tear. Put it in the pan. Open it up. Fit it like that. And then I'm going to just take the edges and I'm going to turn them in if you have too much extra, you can use a paring knife and cut them off, but make it a little higher than the sides because there's a lot of filling in this pie. There you go. So the way that looks is all the edges are turned in. It's pretty uniform. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is a rustic pie. Now I'm going to crimp it and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take my two fingers, crimp it like that, working my way around the pie. So you too can have a pie that looks as though it's been store-bought just by crimping it this simply. Take a look around, see if you've missed anything. That should be pretty good. And then you just take a fork and then you just put a couple holes in the bottom. That's going to let the air through so that it cooks evenly and it doesn't bubble up too much. And from there, you're going to put it in the fridge for 30 minutes to cool. So I have my pie that's been chilling in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and the next step is to pre-bake it because if you don't pre-bake it once it's filled you're going to have a really yucky soggy crust. 
So the best way to do that is to take a piece of tin foil, and I'm going to take a little bit of butter, again, butter, it seems it's a theme in this dish. I suppose you could spray it with some, you know, olive oil or something like that, but the recipe that this is adapted from calls for butter, so I'm staying true to that. The piece of foil should be a little bit bigger than the crust so that you can protect the edges so that they don't burn. I've preheated my oven to 425 and I'm just going to fold the edges over gently and as I'm doing this I'm going to make it kind of snug because there's a lot of butter in this crust and it can sort of cave in a little bit so to keep it from doing that I make it snug and then I've got a pound of black beans you can use any beans you can use rice whatever you want I like to use black beans because they're just a nice weight and pour the whole thing right in there spread it out so now I'm going to take my pie with my beans, my weighted beans in here, and I'm going to put it in a 425 oven for eight minutes. When it comes out of the oven, I'm going to remove the foil and the beans and then put it back in the oven for another two to three minutes just to brown up the crust a little bit. So I have a bunch of beautiful kale. It's about a pound's worth, and I'm going to very quickly blanch it. The idea is to soften it, tenderize it up a little bit, and then, but keep it green. So I'm just going to put it right in the water like that. And I'm going to get my tongs, turn that up, and just work it in there without mashing it. You can. And you know it's done when it just turns into this beautiful green and it's just a little bit soft to the touch, but not mushy, just for a second. So kind of rotating, you can even see, like look at that beautiful green color. See that change? Love that and it smells really good too. And I'm going to take my colander just like this and I'm going to just strain it like that. And I've got a pan heating up here. I'm going to take two tablespoons of butter, drop that right in there, and I'm going to sort of lay that out like that. Take my very sharp knife, remove some of the tougher stems there, and then just chop it roughly. I'm just going to saute that for a second just to get rid of some of the moisture that's on there and coat it with butter. And then I'm going to take it right out of the pan, right back into that colander because ultimately this is going to get added back into the next mixture that we're going to saute up. Okay, I'm going to add another two tablespoons of butter. Throw that right in there. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. And I'm going to start with some onions. And that's about a half a cup of onions as well. So throw that right in there. Oh, that smells so good. And then I've got a good sized clove of garlic. And as with any recipe, if you like more garlic, add more garlic. You really, this is, you can't really ruin this pie. And then I'm going to add my potatoes. And if you're going to cut your potatoes ahead of time, be sure to keep them covered in water so they don't turn brown if you're prepping ahead of time. And same thing for the parsnips, about a half a cup of parsnips which are the, one of the most wonderful winter vegetables I can think of. You want these potatoes and the parsnips to get softer but keep a little bit of their crunch because they're going to cook an hour in the pie so you don't want them to be too mushy. Now I'm going to add the kale into the potato, parsnip, onion and garlic filling just for a second just to combine everything. Stir it around till it's all combined. There we go, perfect. Now I'm just going to set this aside to let it cool. So now I'm going to take my kale mixture that's been cooling and I am going to add it to this egg mixture to make the filling for the pie. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to whisk up these eggs like so. Then I'm going to add a half a cup of mozzarella and a half a cup of Parmesan um, Reggiano, which is my favorite kind because it's just got great melting quality. 
And if you're looking at this bowl, you're thinking to yourself, that is more than half a cup of mozzarella. And you know what? It is. Why? Because I like it. So I'm adding more. If you add, want a little less or you even want to add another kind of cheese in there, maybe some, oh, I don't know, something that's a little sharper, you can do that too. Mix it all up. Like that. This is a third of a cup of light cream. Add that in there. If you're diet conscious, I suppose you could go with half and half or something a little lighter, but I'm not quite sure that it would bind thing, the filling up quite right. And I'm going to season it with some freshly ground black pepper. This is a peppercorn mix. You can see it's actually got these beautiful red colors in it. Um, it gives it a little bit of kick and a little bit of spice, maybe some pimientos in there and then sea salt, and I admit it, I love salt. I know it's bad, 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 bad. I love it anyway, and so I'm putting it in. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to add my cooled mixture. If it's still a little bit warm, add it slowly so that you don't end up scrambling up your eggs. I'll just add it a little bit at a time, like that. Bring the temperature of the eggs and the kale up to one another. Figure out how to do it. Add it all in. Like so. Try not to make as much of a mess as I'm making right now. You don't want to mush your vegetables, so I'm just going to try to sort of turn them like that so that they're nice and evenly coated. Now I'm going to take my pie shell that's been pre-cooked, as we said before, and I'm just going to fill it right up. Remember, the, it, it will look really full, but the kale does cook down. And if you're worried about it spilling in your oven, just put a cookie sheet underneath it, and it'll catch anything that might spill out, but it shouldn't. Or you could use a deep dish pan as well, or even a tart pan, but this is just your basic 9-inch pie pan. Now the next thing I'm going to do is roll out my um, top crust. So I'm going to clear my counter off over here, take a little flour, get the board ready. And here's the other half of the dough, the disc that was chilling in the fridge. Unwrap it. A little flour on your hands. And get my grandmother's rolling pin going. There we go. I just wonder how many pies she made with this. That ought to be just about right. So um, when you make this pie, you're going to want to vent the top of it. So you can do that in a number of different ways. You can take the pie crust and put it right on top and cut slits in it. But I have these really sweet little, um, they're shaped like leaves, these little sh um, cookie cutters. So I'm just going to make a little decorative design here by cutting them out. And I'm going to save these because I'll use those later and make just like a nice little decorative design here. Try to do it right in the middle. And I'm going to fold it in half like that. Carefully pick it up, slide my pie over, and lay it right down in the middle like that. And voila! Okay, so sort of center it the way you want it. And then you are going to crimp the edges again, like so. So if you have some dough left over, which I hope I will, you can cut some more decorative little designs to put on your pie. And you can see I've got a lot of extra over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my knife and just cut a little bit off right there. Because I'm going to use that. to make a design for the top of the pie. And continue on. And this dough is not particularly delicate, so you can really stretch it, which is nice. Easy to manipulate. There we go. Now the next step, I'm going to take um, an egg wash, which is one egg yolk and a teaspoon of water. Stir it all up in a little ramekin like this, and I'm going to use this little brush and I'm going to brush up the crust, and it just gives it a beautiful golden color, makes it shiny, really pretty. A little crunch to it. 
And again, if it looks like the edges are kind of falling over, just pop them back up there. Okay. Okay, so let's put some designs on. So I have these little leaves, leaves right here, and I'm just going to take them and position them. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them just go around the pie like that. You could do flowers. You could do anything you want. And then I'm just going to give them a really quick little brush so that they glaze up too and it helps them stick so they don't fall off. So I've put the egg wash on the pie. It's decorated and ready to go. I'm going to put it in a preheated 350 oven for an hour. I'm going to keep an eye on it, and if it looks as though the edges are getting a little bit too brown, you can just take a piece of foil and wrap it around the edge to keep it from burning, but it should come out just perfectly. Once you take it out of the oven, you're just going to let it set up a little bit, cut it, and have it for dinner. So here is our finished kale, potato, and parsnip pie just out of the oven. It looks beautiful, nice golden color. You see that the, um, the little leaves that we put on stayed, and I can't wait to cut out into this and have it for lunch. Hope you enjoy it.